uh, it, it hasn't changed. And essentially, the reason for our zero dollar price target is a credit agreement they entered with BMO. Mm -hmm. Effectively, for the first time in, for any cannabis company, major cannabis company we've seen, they effectively put up as collateral their assets, effectively their production facilities. Yeah. And if you look at what, hap what happened with Aurora in their fiscal first quarter of 20, uh, despite nearly $200 million of one-time asset sales, that's their T-God sell, um, that's their debt issuance, um, and that's also their at-the-money stock issuances, their cash balance still fell by 20 million sequentially quarter over quarter, and their free cash flow burn was negative 200 million. Mm. So massive, you know, one-time cash generation in that quarter, still burning significant amounts of cash. If you look at their OPEX, it dwarfs their gross profit. So when you look at their equity, if we put a multiple on what we think they're going to earn this year, divide that by their shares outstanding, we get an equity value of 24 cents. But when you consider that their SG&A alone is dwarfing their gross profit yeah. and they're burning excess amounts of cash and they have to be EBITDA positive by Q3 of this year, essentially September of 2020, which we don't think is going to happen, we think they have big problems. Yeah, just adding to this, just in the most recent quarter, their debt was $559 million just in the last quarter alone. Right. Do they even have a pathway to pay back those creditors even at this point? We don't think so. And one thing that's interesting, so they had a convertible bond that was coming due this year. Um, and it was a convertible bond that was convertible at just under $14 a share. And what they decided to do is discount that all the way down to just under $3 a share. So provide those guys a 75% discount, meaning instead of paying that debt back, they allowed those convertible bondholders to convert that debt into equity. They had a decision to convert or not. 99% of them converted and sold the stock, which caused another 60 million shares to be issued into the market and dilute existing shareholders. Look, the fact of the matter is this. Over the past roughly three years, Aurora's uh, uh, shares outstanding have went from about 100 million to a billion shares outstanding. They're perpetually issuing shares that's diluting shareholders holders because they need cash to run a business that isn't generating money. As we saw with Afria's results today, the 2.0 product rollout isn't going to be what people expect. Ontario said, we're going to start the rollout in April and we're going to do 20 stores a month. Weeds, uh, Canopy's CEO, CFO, I'm sorry, said on their last earnings call, he was factoring to their guidance, the rollout beginning January 1 in 40 stores a month. So he was thinking 480 uh, retail stores for 2.0. The uh, Ontario um, uh, authorities are saying 180 at best. And then you look at the second largest province in Canada, Quebec, they've effectively, for the time being, outlawed vapes and other type of edibles. And there's other major provinces that aren't allowing vapes and other edibles. So. The point is we think the 2.0 product rollout this year is going to be more of a headwind than a tailwind. You can see that with what Afria said today where they lowered numbers partially attributed to week 2.0 sales. So we think there's more negative news to come uh, on the back of what we've seen in 2019.